Dear students, I am Praveen E.P., Assistant Professor, PG Department of Commerce, MES College, Maramballi. Today, we deal with the topic of amalgamation, which is mainly focused for S4 BCom students and S1 MCom students. Today, there is an increasing tendency for business combinations. The motives behind business combinations include growth, survival, prestige, etc. It is done by amalgamation. So what is amalgamation? When two or more existing companies join together and form a new company called amalgamation. For example, Vodafone and Idea amalgamated to form a new company called V Limited. So amalgamation refers to the formation of a new company to purchase two or more existing companies which go into liquidation. The merger of two or more existing companies into a single new company is called amalgamation. According to standard 14, amalgamation is defined as an amalgamation pursuant to the provisions of the company's such 1956 or any other statute which may be applicable to companies. In amalgamation, which include two companies, first one transfer company, second one transferee company. Transfer company which means the company which is amalgamated to another company and transferee company which means the company into which a vendor company is amalgamated. There are two types of amalgamation. First one amalgamation in the nature of merger and second one amalgamation in the nature of purchase. Then amalgamation in the nature of merger the following conditions are satisfied. First one, after amalgamation, all the assets and liabilities of the vendor company become the assets and liabilities of the purchasing company. Second point, shareholders holding not less than 90% of the face value of the equity shares of the vendor company should become the shareholders of the purchasing company. Third one, the consideration payable. Here, consideration means purchase price payable to the shareholders should be discharged by the purchasing company only by the issue of equity shares and cash can be payable in respect of fractional shares. Fourth one, after amalgamation, the business of vendor company is to be carried by the purchasing company. And last one, after amalgamation, no adjustment is intended to be made to the book values of the assets and liabilities of the vendor company. These are the conditions regarding amalgamation in the nature of merger. Second one, amalgamation in the nature of purchase. When any of the conditions specified for amalgamation in the nature of merger is not satisfied, an amalgamation is said to be nature of purchase. Under purchase method, when one company acquires another company, or when two or more companies join together to form a new company, the equity shareholders of the combining companies do not continue to hold proportionate shares in the combined company. That means after amalgamation, the shareholders of the purchasing company does not possess any shares in the vendor company. That is called amalgamation in the nature of purchase. Then what is purchase consideration? It is the purchase price payable by the purchasing company to the vendor company on acquisition of the business. There are four methods for calculating purchase consideration. First one, lump sum method. Second one, net worth or net assets method. Third one, net payment method. And fourth one, share exchange method. What is lump sum method? Under this method, the purchasing company agrees to pay a fixed sum as purchase consideration to the vendor company. 
for example when x limited acquires the business of y limited the purchase consideration payable by x limited to y limited is fixed at rupees 18 lakh this is the case of lump sum method second one net worth or net assets method under this method purchase consideration is equal to the value of assets taken over at agreed values minus the values of liabilities taken over at agreed values so net worth or net asset equal to assets taken minus liabilities taken for example assets taken by the purchasing company 4 rupees 15 lakh and liabilities taken 4 rupees 7 lakh here net worth or net assets equal to rupees 15 lakh minus rupees 7 lakh equal to rupees 8 lakh this is the amount of purchase consideration third one net payment method under this any payment made by the purchasing company to the discharge of liabilities of the vendor company are not considered for calculating the purchase consideration for example a vendor company have 40000 equity shares rupees 10 each and 30000 15% preference shares rupees 10 each the purchasing company made the consideration as follows first one issue of two equity shares of rupees 10 each for every three preference shares of vendor company second one issue of one equity shares rupees 10 each and a payment in cash of rupees 5 for every equity shares in vendor company the calculation of purchase consideration is as follows that is first one the payment to preference shareholders 30000 preference shares into two equity shares issued by the purchasing company divided by three preference shares held in the vendor company equal to 20000 equity shares of rupees 10 each equal to rupees 2 lakh second payment to equity shares 40000 equity shares into one equity share issued by the purchasing company divided by one share held in the vendor company equal to 40000 equity shares into rupees 10 each equal to rupees 4 lakh and payment in the form of cash 40000 equity shares of rupees 5 each rupees 2 lakh so total purchase consideration is equal to rupees 8 lakh this is the purchase consideration under net payment method fourth one share exchange method this is the last method for calculating purchase consideration under this method purchase consideration is equal to the intrinsic value of shares plus value of any liability of the transfer company transfer company means when uh, vendor company not taken over by the purchasing company intrinsic value of a share equal to net assets divided by number of equity shares of the vendor company before calculating intrinsic value of a share we have to find out net assets of the concern for example net assets of the company is equal to rupees 32 lakh number of equity shares equal to 80000 shares so intrinsic value of one equity share equal to rupees 32 lakh divided by 80000 equity shares equal to rupees 40 per share then accounting entries in the books of the transfer company for this purpose a realization account is opened in the books of the vendor company then what is realization account it is a nominal account which is prepared for the purpose of closing the accounts of assets and liabilities of the vendor company and for finding out the profit or loss on realization then first entry is that for closing assets at book value entry will be realization account debtor to various asset the sum of the assets are not taken over by the purchasing company uh, that is debit to balance in p and l account advertisement suspense account discount on issue of shares or debentures underwriting commission etc these items are transferred to equity shareholders account second one transfer of liabilities at book value entry will be various liabilities account debtor to realization third one transfer of various provisions at book value uh, regarding assets and liabilities 
entry will be various provisions account debtor to realization fourth one purchase consideration due entry will be transferee company account debtor to realization fifth one on receipt of purchase consideration shares in transferee company account debtor bank account debtor to transferee company next one for the sale of any assets which are not taken over by the purchasing company which are sold by the vendor company this is in three ways first one sale of assets at book value entry bank account debtor to assets second one sale of assets at a profit bank account debtor to assets to realization that is profit on sale of assets transfer to realization account third one sale of assets at a loss entry will be bank account debtor realization account debtor to assets here the loss on sale of assets transferred to realization account next one discharge of liability which are not taken over by the purchasing company met by the vendor company this is also in three ways first one is that payment of liability at book value entry will be liability account debtor to bank second one if payment is made at a lesser amount so entry will be liability account debtor to bank to realization third one if payment is made at a higher amount entry will be liability account debtor realization account debtor to bank then eighth one for closing of preference share capital this is also in three ways first one is that at book value entry will be preference share capital account debtor to bank if the preference share holder is allowed a discount so the entry will be preference share capital account debtor to bank to realization then at higher value entry will be preference share capital account debtor realization account debtor to bank for liquidation expenses met by the vendor company entry will be realization account debtor to bank for closing of realization account if it shows a profit entry will be realization account debtor to equity shareholders account if it shows a loss entry will be equity shareholders account debtor to realization account then for transferring of the amount due to equity shareholders entry will be equity share capital account debtor various reserve account debtor to equity shareholders account for transfer of various losses entry will be equity shareholders account debtor to accumulate losses account then for paying of equity shareholders entry will be equity shareholders account debtor to shares in transferee company to bank these are the accounting entries in the books of vendor company at the time of amalgamation and the last topic is that accounting entries in the books of the transferee company or purchasing company first one is that when the purchase of business entry will be business purchase account debtor to liquidator of vendor company second point for assets and liabilities taken over in uh, in this case the assets shows a uh, capital shows a higher value than the liabilities and the business purchase the difference is treated as a reserve so entry will be asset account debtor to liabilities to business purchase to capital reserve and the assets is less than the liabilities and business purchase entry will be asset account debtor goodwill account debtor to liabilities to business purchase next one making payment to the liquidator entry will be liquidator of the vendor company account debtor to share capital to securities premium to bank at last if liquidation expenses are paid by the purchasing company entry will be goodwill or capital reserve account debtor to bank these are the accounting entries in the books of the purchasing company thank you